the war began, at least 600,000 kids were deprived from their school. Uh, schools were closed. Uh, in the case of UNRWA, most of them were used as, as shelters. But what this means is that if this war continues, we are on the verge of losing a whole generation of, of children. Let's further discuss this now with uh, Nasser Mashni. He joins us from Sydney. He's the president of Australia Palestine Advocacy Network. Thank you so much for being with us on the program. So the latest warnings that we're hearing from UNRWA are absolutely devastating with them saying that you know, at least or almost half of the Palestinians killed in Gaza are children. How will this have an impact on the population there in the long term? Thank you so much for having me. And the reality is what we're seeing, this absolute genocide uh, on Gaza, as Lancet said earlier on this week, up to 186,000 Palestinians could be, have been killed thus far. The destruction of every school, hospital, all of the civil infrastructure is going to mean a generation of Palestinians, maybe more, will never exist, never be educated, never have opportunities that many of us take for granted. It's sickening, it's despicable, it's beyond time for the international community to demand Israel stops and to apply diplomatic sanctions and, if necessary, military force to help stop this genocide. Right. Speaking of the international community, because they failed uh, to stop Israel from conducting this bombing campaign, which raises the question of how many innocent people need to be killed, how many Palestinians need to be killed until their strongest ally, being the United States, says enough is enough. You need to stop. And we are stopping this. I wish I knew the metric. During the week, we saw the bombing of a uh, Ukrainian hospital by the Russians, and the condemnation rang out across the Western world, the condemnation of Russia's actions over a single school. And it is right to condemn Russia for that, uh, that bombing. But what we should be saying is every single primary school, high school, university, every education facility in Gaza has been entirely obliterated. Where is the condemnation for that? The fact that there is this hypocrisy, this duplicity, based on the color of our skin, our religion, how we or how we celebrate God, is beyond despicable. The global South will never forgive, will never forget, as Palestinians and our allies all over the world, how quickly the West abandoned us. This is a pivotal moment. Gaza 2023 is going to change the world and how people react. Right. And um, the Palestinian diaspora, of course, worldwide have mobilized, not just the Palestinian diaspora. I mean, everyone uh, supporting a free Palestine has mobilized even before uh, October 7 for the freedom of the country. But it seems like the awareness and the protests have kind of slowed down and they've kind of gone quiet. Just talk to us about the importance of keeping the message alive. Yeah, indeed, there's no question we're now nine months into this brutal genocide, despicable ethnic cleansing by the Zionist regime of Israel. The people in the West have got tired. That said, continually across this continent, every week for 40 weeks in a row now, Australians have come out. The numbers have dwindled, but the energy hasn't. We have mass mobilization campaigns, blockades of uh, arms manufacturers and manufacturers of componentry for the weapon system that ends up in Israel. They are happening at the growing boycott, divestment and sanctions campaign is empowering. We have a campaign here against our retirement funds, superannuation funds, from investing retirement monies in the oppression of Palestinians, increasingly across every level of government, at state governments, at rate payer council level, through to federal governments. Australians of all political stripes are saying, no more, don't use our money to fund this genocide. It's past time for the entire world to treat apartheid, genocidal Israel, the way we treat other genocidal regimes. It should be diplomatically isolated immediately and sanctions placed upon it. All right. The president of Australia Palestine Advocacy Network, Nasser Mashni, thank you so much for being with us here on the News Hour and sharing that insight with us. I appreciate it. Thank you so much.